My name is Antonio Gea. I'm working at Google and TL for Signal World. And I want to talk to you about a new feature that we developed and it was released in 129 about managing multiple service sites. But to try to explain why we need this feature is because when you talk about Kubernetes clusters, you always used to think in terms of I need so many, so much CPU, so much storage. But IP addresses is always something that people don't realize until they hit the problem. You see the map of internet, there are only a few ranks where you can get IP addresses for your cluster, right? You are not going to use public IP addresses as they are super expensive. And for getting these IP addresses, this means that you need to carve out from some these private ranks some, some value, right? You need IP addresses for your nodes, you need IP addresses for your pods, and you need IP addresses for your services. The main problem is that we tried from SIG Network to try to standardize this problem, but all the node IPs are provided by the network infrastructure uh, provider. Then for the pods, you need to, there are different plugins, so it's not easy to standardize. So the only thing that we can control is the service side, right? That's the one that you assign in the, in the API server. So, the problem with services is that the services is, as I said, it's a flag in the API server, so you need to hard code that when you start your cluster. The way that it works is when you create a service, it gets allocated one IP from this server, right? And once you have this IP, this is immutable. So you cannot remove it or, uh, from a service that is already allocated. Uh, also, the size of this service either is limited, right? Because this, for implementation details, this is hard coded in the, in the ETCD database, and, and you cannot modify it when it's running. And this creates several problems to the user, right? If, then if you are greedy or you are conservative and you start your cluster and suddenly you start to grow, you may hit limits and you cannot reset your cluster. The other problem is that uh, you cannot use IPv6 because the this, this size of this branch is limited, or you cannot have, you can deal with problems on upgrades if you just try to modify the flags in different IP servers at the same time. So one of the possible solutions we are talking about IP exhaustion is can be, okay, we, why don't we use IPv6, right? I mean, that's, that's how I started in this project in 2019. I we started working with IPv6, right? I was with this mindset of, okay, let's let's try to get IPv6 in Kubernetes so everybody can use it, right? But IPv6 is a long ride. It's the first specification was written and published in 1996. The world IPv6 launch was in 2012. Kubernetes made GA in 123 in 2021, IPv6 and dual stack. And we see that there is a trend of adoption, right? But every year is the IPv6 year, right? So what I started to do is to start to prepare. I'm not confident I'm going to be able to see a full IPv6 cluster, so I started to prepare my son to say, okay, you need to take on this and work on, work on IPv6. But jokes aside is how this kept work, right? How this feature works. What we did is, okay, Less the people have the capability to define these service runs that they need to increase the, the cluster size during runtime. So what we did is we created two new objects that says service cider and then they, they add pools of IP addresses to the cluster. So in this case, the IP address is, is treated as a fungible resource, right? So you, the, the same way that you add disks to storage to increase capacity, you add new runs. So if you want to play with this feature, you can use kind. You need to enable some of the feature gates and runtime config. And in a quick demo, we can see that uh, a cluster created with a small service cider that only is able to allocate uh, 16 services, you can see that if you try to allocate more than the services is not possible, then you increase the capacity. And now you are going to be able to create these additional services, right? So. Simple, you don't need to restart your cluster and you get it working uh, new services with new capacity. In the same case, we have a protection, so you cannot break your cluster. If you try to delete this new service either, meanwhile, all the services has these IPs and are allocated, you are not going to be able to, to remove it. 
I'm the tip.